guys, this is Svetlana from Comic Cosplay. And if you follow my work for a bit, you know that I just finished a pretty huge Monster Hunter cosplay. And what does any reasonable cosplayer do that just completed a huge, intense and crazy project? Take a break. Right, make an even bigger one. <laughs> I love the super cute Nagiganta since I saw it the very first time in Monster Hunter World. Such a cutie. Oh, look at it. Oh, yo, 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 yo. I knew I had to build its amazing armor set. Just look at it. It's gigantic. So many spikes. And it will take me forever to make them. I cannot sit with it. It's super uncomfortable and it's perfect. <sighs> In this first video, I will show you how I made the helmet, the shoulder armor, the breastplate, the bracer and the schlinger. In case you also want to create some super cool foam armor, just check out my foam armor book on comiccosplay.com. Buy my books. Yay! And now let's cut some foam. So let's start with the Nurgigante helmet. To build the horns, I printed out a screenshot and traced it to pink insulation foam. I stacked several layers together and cut and carved it until it looked like this. Afterwards, I covered the material with duct tape and drew on the patterns I wanted to use for my foam horns. I cut the parts out and traced the result on 5mm EVA foam. Once I had all pieces lying on my table, I carefully connected the edges with contact cement. This way, I got a lovely lightweight foam horn. For more stability, I mixed up some liquid soft expanding foam and poured it into the hollow horn. Next, I added deeper lines with the sanding tip of my Dremel and finished the texture with my wood burning tool. And yes, I had to mirror my patterns and do it all again for the other horn. For the helmet itself, I covered a 3D printed copy of my hat and duct tape. I drew on a pattern and traced it to Warbler. Next, I made a simple Warbler helmet and used teeth to attach the face part to it. This was the base. Now I added contact cement and covered it with 5mm EVA foam. To get a wild dragon-like texture, I burned in scales with my wood burning tool. I also shaped a few more foam parts with my Dremel and glued them to my Warbler base. The horns were super professionally attached with a crazy amount of hot glue. Hey, if it works, it works! Next, the spikes. I created some super easy paper dummies, which I then traced to 10mm EVA foam. After cutting everything out and gluing two layers together, I sanded each spike into shape. Contact cement was just perfect to place them properly. Benny designed a vector file of the emblem at the front and engraved it to foam with our laser cutter. I only had to glue it in, super handy! As you can see, I ripped off the scales again and covered the horns in three thick layers of flex bond. Next, I also applied three layers of plastic dip to the rest of the helmet. For the paint job, I started with a bone looking color for the horns. Then Benny covered the rest in dirty dark brown and silver. He also added shadows to the horns and bright yellow markings to the front piece. After the base color was done, the whole helmet got covered in a thick layer of spray varnish. This was necessary for the washing technique. For that we applied dark brown oil colors and then wrapped them off again with a paper towel. By doing this, the dark paint only stayed in the deeper spots. This really highlights the texture and all the details. After this, Benny only dabbed on a few more dark spots onto the scales. The rest of the spikes were made with foam clay. I simply rolled a sausage and made it nice and spiky at the end. 
and this project required a lot of sausages. Also, every single one of them had to be covered in three layers of flexbond. Then airbrushed with a basic color, airbrushed with some shades, airbrushed with more shades and finally a coat of spray varnish. These were the spikes just for the helmet. So many spikes! After I was done, I glued on every single spike with contact cement. Once all of them were attached, I also added some oil paint for a more weathered look. Finally, a layer of spray varnish and the helmet was done. Yay! So much work, but I think it was worth it. Now it was time for the sexy breastplate. Benny helped me to cover myself in plastic wrap and duct tape and then drew on the patterns. He cut me free, I separated all parts and then traced them to 5mm EVA foam. Then I cut the pieces out and connected them carefully with contact glue. To get the booby cups nice and round, I heated up the foam and pulled it over an acrylic sphere. Finally, I connected all the remaining parts and got the base of my breastplate. So far, so good. Following this, I made more spikes out of EVA foam, which I glued on to the sides. I covered the whole base with an additional 2mm layer of foam. By heating it up carefully, I was able to attach it neatly like a second skin. To add the texture, I used my wood burning tool again. I always did this work step in my spray booth and also wore a protective respirator. Oh, and I added this bottom part that I almost forgot at the end. Next followed three layers of Plasti Dip a dirty brown basic paint, orange highlights, a coat of spray varnish and a lot of oil paint. Once Benny rubbed off the dark brown color and placed more shadows onto each scale, he finally applied the last layer of spray varnish. Meanwhile, I sewed some four leather straps and hot glued them to the inside of my breastplate. With a little bit of velcro here and there, the attachment as well as the breastplate was done too. Next, the color. I guess this piece doesn't need much explanation. After drawing the patterns on duct tape, I built a base out of 5mm EVA foam and added 2mm foam on top, just like before. I burned in the texture added bevel details all around and Benny laser engraved me another emblem. Well, and after airbrushing and some dark brown oil paint, this was the result, yay! The pauldron was a little bit more tricky. To figure out the right pattern, I made a few small freestyle paper dummies. After getting the right shape, I scaled up the whole thing to the right size. Then a few similar work steps. I don't think I need to explain everything here in detail again. Once I had the base, I made it a little bit rounder with an acrylic sphere and also built some paper spike dummies. Based on these patterns, I created a few different ones out of 5mm EVA foam. As you can see here, I sanded the edges to get angular spikes. These then got dremeled again and glued on. I also made a second, slightly larger pauldron and cut in holes for the spikes. Next, I pulled this additional layer on top and stuck it all together. After cutting the spikes free, they actually looked like they grew out of the foam. Now I only had to dremel a bit, burn in the texture, add a few more elements and the pauldron was ready for painting. The foam was still pretty rough from all the sanding, so I covered the horns first with some flex bond and only then with Plasti Dip. Following this, Benny applied the base paint with an airbrush, added shadows to the horns and a good amount of oil paint to the rest of the pauldron. Well, and this was the final result. The base of the other pauldron looked a little bit weird. 
I ended up building a big piece of foam around my shoulder that I could cover with a lot of spikes. And I mean a lot of spikes. I made another hundred or so and cut each to the right angle. Then I glued them on one after the other. You can imagine building and attaching so many spikes took quite a while. Finally, I added some weathering with oil paint and this part was done as well. Slowly we're getting somewhere. The right bracer started very simple as well. I made a paper dummy and then the base of the 5mm EVA foam. Some heat helped me to shape it and the second layer of foam kept it in this way. Then again, more spikes, which I dremeled and glued on. Afterwards, I covered the whole bracer with more contact cement and attached a third layer of 2mm foam. Next, I burned in the texture and closed the bracer with a further piece. I placed fake buckles and belts out of foam and finished them with some burned in details. Following this, I added around 1 million more tiny spikes to the open areas. They only had to be heated up, curved, cut and glued. This took a while. But then it was time for priming, airbrushing, oil painting and sealing. This was the finished bracer. Looks good. Finally, the last part of this video, the slinger. Since we were running out of time, I used the slinger pattern of Mellowmind to speed up the process. After tracing all the shapes to EVA foam, I cut them all out and glued them together piece by piece. In addition, I covered a few areas with another layer of foam to burn my scale texture on. I also dremeled the texture to the horns. The rest of the build was just based on the pattern instruction. For this part I used grey high density EVA foam instead of the black one. It allows me to work more precise and is simply less wobbly. Well and once I cut all pieces I connected them with glue and the slinger slowly came to life. Before you ask, no it's not functional and it wasn't my intention. I just tried to finish it as fast as possible and keep it very simple. With the help of Benny, the slinger was done in only 3 hours. Next, I sealed the foam and Benny painted it step by step. You already know the drill. After keeping the horns and the slinger separate, I connected them permanently with contact cement and hot glue. Oh, and I also made a super simple bracer for the slinger attachment. I simply glued on a strip of velcro to this piece and one to the bottom of the slinger. This way I'm able to attach it quite fast and easy. Pew pew! So far so good, that covers around half of the costume and next time I show you the rest. I hope this little video inspired you to create a foam armor as well. It's actually super fun, even if it has 1 million spikes. You should totally give it a try. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if you still have any questions and see you soon. Bye bye.